Hello everyone, and thanks for joining this webinar today. Jeff Gardner is our featured presenter, and he'll be talking about his Job Seeker Success Mindset Training, which is an e-learning program to reduce unemployment. I'm your moderator, Dan Kennedy. During this webinar, we're going to be talking about an e-learning solution that was designed to help job seekers to find jobs faster by teaching them how to create a resilient mindset. That way, they'll persevere and perform well despite the challenges posed by the slow recovery that we're in. We're happy to say that the program's off to a great start. In fact, the state of Illinois has already implemented this course on a statewide basis. And we're going to start things off in a moment, but right away I want to remind folks to turn off anything like, like cell phones that might um, disturb the recording of the call. We'll be recording it, and we'll send you a link to the slides and the audio on YouTube later. Uh, and if for some reason that doesn't work, if you don't get that, then um, we'll get you another link that will work. Also, if you look off to the right of your screens, you should see a control panel, and you should see your name in the attendee list. Now, there's a question box there, too. There, you can enter questions as we go along. We'll be answering some of them towards the end of the program, and if we can't get to all of them, Jeff will do his best to get back to you with a reply. So be sure to put your questions in the question box when you're ready. Um, also doing the webinar, we're going to be conducting a few polls, well, three of them actually, and a survey. If you're listening as part of a group and it comes to time, the time to vote, just come to a quick consensus in, in the group, in the room there, and cast a vote in that direction. Now, as for our agenda, as you can see in front of you there, we're going to be doing some introductions here in a moment. We'll be talking about the objectives of uh, what we want to accomplish today. Uh, Jeff will then get into the background, the design, et cetera, of, of his program. And uh, then, of course, we'll be getting started. And uh, Actually, he'll be talking about how you can get started in the program. And then we're going to have uh, questions and a drawing, I'm happy to say. We'll have a drawing. And um, briefly, what that's all about is at the conclusion of the webinar, we're going to be conducting a drawing for five sets of employment mindset audios. Each package includes seven CDs that are full of engaging stories that teach you how to create the right mindset to find a job faster. Included also are two self-hypnosis CDs that help you relax as well as to energize your emotions, that'll, the kind that will get you up and moving to find your best work. So let's move on here. Let's do our introductions. First of all, I'd like to introduce you. <laughs> There's more, more than 150 of you uh, have registered from 20 different states for this, for this event today. Uh, plus, there are several groups of you in conference rooms from Rhode Island to California. Now, many of you are with the Department of Labor, of course, and you're also with workforce development uh, programs around, around the country your one-stop caseworkers, your trainers, your transition assistants, military officers. You're also career services providers from inside career schools and uh, different colleges. We even have a couple of elected officials today. So the fact that you're here speaks to your professionalism, and it says you care. You care about your clients, plus you care about reducing high unemployment costs. So thank you and welcome. A little bit about me. Uh, I was, a, for 14 years, I've been a career an executive coach here in the Seattle area. Uh, I've also had a radio show and have done a lot of podcast production on career development issues. In fact, that's how I met Jeff about a year ago. I interviewed him about his book, Career Contentment, and uh, struck up a good relationship that way. Uh, I have a new company, and I'll just briefly tell you about it. It's, it's one that can actually help you and your one-stop uh, organization really stand out online. And I'll just tell you the URL. It's vocaladvantage.com, and uh, feel free to take a look anytime you like. But let's get to the star of the show, <laughs> Jeff, Jeff Gar uh, Garden. Um, he is a best-selling author. He's a staffing consultant and a career coach whose background includes managing and leading the global staffing efforts for Kraft Foods and Miller Brewing Company. And, of course, he's the creator of the new Job Seeker Success Mindset Training. So let me briefly touch on our objectives today, and then I'll hand it off to Jeff. Basically, this webinar is going to enable you to discuss why mindset training is essential to helping people find jobs faster. It's going to help you to describe the benefits of this training to job seekers and employers and to the states and academic institutions. And finally, it's going to help you build the case for your institution to provide mindset training to job seekers. We've got a full plate indeed, so let me hand it off now to Jeff Garden. Jeff. It's all yours. And thanks, Dan. Hi, folks, and welcome to the webinar. Now, I want to just say a couple things to kick it off here. For the past 100 years or so, psychologists have been telling us that by controlling how you think, you can make yourself feel optimistic and productive, even during tough times like today. 
This is possible because your circumstances don't cause how you feel. You do by controlling how you think about what happens. Now here's the thing. Although we've heard this umpteen times before, we, can, we still cause ourselves to feel beat down and unproductive. We, we make mountains out of molehills. We become depressed, stop trying, and, and we engage in negative conversations with ourselves. So what's up with that? You see, even though you and I know what we should do, we were never taught how to do it. We forgot to teach people how to create and maintain a resilient mindset to persevere despite their challenges. Now, we do a great job teaching people how to look for jobs. That's easy. But what we don't do is teach them how to maintain an upbeat attitude until they can eventually find jobs. The tools to do this have not been available. And now more than ever, we need those tools. We don't know how long, for example, this recovery is going to take. Today, we're talking about a resource that finally teaches the unemployed how to create the mindset skills to persevere and find jobs faster than any economy, a resource that gives you an edge in reducing high unemployment. So here we go. Jeff, before we get going much further, I just want to do a little administrative piece. I've been asked some questions about whether our attendees need to have a microphone, and the answer is no, not a problem. Okay, thanks. And Dan, feel free to make those things known during this thing because I don't think of them. What we're looking at here, this is my, this is my t career timeline spanning four recession periods. And I, I'm sure many of you people, have, your careers have, have spanned these same four periods. And why, wanting the answer to this question right here is why I specialize in staffing. During this period right here with Kraft Foods and Miller Brewing, I wanted to know why some people found jobs quickly, regardless of the economy, and, and why others looked for months, found nothing, and gave up. What, what gave people their advantages, and how do we teach people to create those advantages? Now, helpful to my research was this period right here, the, the decade of the brain. That's what George Bush Sr. called it. Over 90% of what we know about the human brain was discovered during this period thanks to new scanning technology. And starting in 2001, I left the corporate world, and I used that research and all of my experience to develop improved training to help people find jobs faster. That was during this development period here. We tested that training inside One Stops in Waukegan and Grays Lake, Illinois, and in the Career Resource Center of Lake Forest and the Condell Medical Centers in here, here in North Lake County, Illinois. And then over here, in 2008, the American Society for Training and Development published a book I wrote about my experiences, and it became a bestseller. Then in 2010, the state of Illinois asked if I could convert the classroom course to online learning. And we worked together to make that happen. And what makes this course meaningful is that it was designed by a staffing specialist, a school teacher, and a former one-stop trainer in Arizona. And then it was refined by a workforce professional who's with us today. Lola Lucas is the person inside the Illinois Department of Employment Security who worked with me to convert that classroom course to e-learning. So, Lola, thanks for joining us today. Now, what did I learn during that period as a recruiter? Well, <laughs> I learned that the advantages that some people had were not created necessarily by their occupational job search skills, but by their mindset skills to create self-motivation, higher levels of optimism, and resilience. All of these things are important, but not as important as mindset. Now, for example, if, if, if you've got a PhD from MIT, but a personality as if you were trained by Al-Qaeda, I'm not going to hire you. So you, you, you've got to understand mindset. Let me explain how it work, works. This is what I learned. Employment is by invitation only. Now, good job search skills will get your foot in the door. And then good occupational skills will help you survive that, that second cut. But then you enter what we call, us recruiters, we call the spin zone. At that point, your job search skills are not relevant. In fact, we're more concerned about our ability to retain you than your ability to look for a job. And by this point again, everyone's occupational skills are near equal. And you and I both know employers don't always hire the best qualified people. So who do they hire? They hire who they like most. Last year, <laughs> I was doing a presentation using this, this slide up in, in Wisconsin. Somebody in the back of the room just let it slip. They said, that's Betty White. <laughs> that's right. That is Betty White. Betty gets what Betty wants because she's likable. We call that, even though she's retired, we call that the Betty White factor. Employers single out and select who they like most from among who they say is the best qualified. 
That could be anyone. So it works like this. From the employer's point of view, my point of view in, in, in hiring people, getting to that most like status, okay, they say, we do a good job developing the skills that determine who gets considered, their occupational skills and job search skills. But what we don't do a good job is developing the skills that determine who gets hired. Those, those, the advantages, self-motivation, self optimism, and resilience, what employers call that right fit in chemistry. Now, both of these factors are employers, but employers don't hire people for their ability to find work, but for their ability to perform work. So what we're doing here is raising attention or bringing awareness up on this new skills gap that mindset training seeks to address. Now, I'm not just talking off the top of my head. Let's take a look. What happens with job seekers with the advantages? Well, research from, the, from this uh, organization here says that job seekers with that right mindset, the optimistic mindset, find jobs faster and they're more rapidly promoted. Researchers at uh, the Fuqua School of Business in North Carolina and Duke University say that this is because the optimistic mindset causes people to think you're more personable. You have better coping skills, and even, this is, this is amazing to me, even if you are not exactly optimistic, even just appearing to be so improves your likability. So the point here is the right mindset creates those advantages, enabling people to avoid prolonged prolong periods of unemployment. What about the people with the, without the advantages? And you've, you see these people every day. Now, without those advantages, the Brookings Institute came out with a study in March said that the longer a search continues unsuccessfully, the job seeker loses steam. They lose hope. Their skills deteriorate. They lose optimism. And then what happens is they experience higher levels of sadness, discouragement, and depression. They reach that area of emotional instability. Now, I sent you a handout that talks about emotional stability. I hope you had a chance to take a look at that. So what does this mean? Well, as people stop looking, more states have to borrow to fund their unemployment benefits. That's what we're trying to avoid. Now we've known, we've known for two generations, or see, two decades rather, that the, the psychological effects of long-term unemployment impairs a person's ability to perform well. And for some reason, I can't understand our society has chosen not to systematically address this problem. And here you see some of, the, some of the highlights resulting from prolonged periods of unemployment. So the, the, the point here is that our job seekers are hurting. Their beat down attitude is eroding their performance capabilities and prolonging their unemployment. They need help. They need help. So now I'm going to start talking about what, what this job seeker mindset training is. And, it, and Jeff, let me just uh, say real quickly and remind folks, if, if you have questions about anything that Jeff's saying, Feel free to type them into the question box there off to the right. All right. Thanks a million, Dan. We're going to talk about the differences between uh, mindset training and traditional training. The point to keep in mind, mindset training does not replace traditional job search training. It supplements it. Both are very important. So let's talk about the differences. Traditional training teaches you how to find jobs, how to look for jobs. It facilitates that staffing process and a person's consideration, but it doesn't soothe their emotional turmoil. They're on their own. And just because they've got a great resume, got good interview skills, doesn't guarantee I'm going to hire them. Not if they don't have the right mindset skills to perform well that I'm looking for. So what's mindset training? Mindset training teaches people how to persevere and perform well despite those difficult circumstances and all the things going on. It gets them to that Betty White factor. So the difference we're pointing out here is that job, the traditional job search training focuses on the mechanics of how to find jobs, whereas Mindset training focuses on the development of the person. So the significance of this is that the fact that employers hire people, not their paperwork or their self-promotion skills. This is why behavioral interviewing was created, to get beyond some of these things that people leverage to make themselves look good and get to the bottom line, get to the under the tent, look under the, look under the hood of the car to find out what this person's mindset capabilities are. So. Mindset training focuses on creating those advantages. Remember what they are? Self-motivation, optimism, and resilience. And the focus of this training is not on the mechanics, but more so on these things here. Purpose, emotional stability in a new area, what we've called, I think you're going to find pretty exciting, staffing etiquette. Now, without that training, job seekers are on their own. 
They get the mechanics, but that's just not enough. That's not what employers are looking for. They want to know if you've got that right mindset to persevere before mom. That's what we call the right fit in chemistry, and it brings to bear that, that area of new skills gap. Okay, Dan, I think we've got a poll. We do indeed. And there it is. <laughs> what are they looking for? What are they looking for? So please go ahead and answer this poll, and uh, we'll then announce the, uh, the results. Give you another few seconds. Oh yeah, all kinds of numbers showing up here. Okay, good, good, good. Wow, that's great. Yeah. So I'll give it uh, another uh, ten seconds <laughs> since people are still voting. Go, feel free. Wow. Okay. Fine. Five, four, and three, and two, and one. And here we go. We're going to close it up. And now let's share the results. Here you go. See what you think. Okay. The, the, you know, they're, they're, we're alike minds in that fit and chemistry are very important and good soft skills. And let me tell you what, what, we, we, what we've learned here is, is interviewers look for everything. However, if, is, the, is the poll closed there, Dan? Just a, oh, I thought you were moving on. I apologize. Is it, is, okay, good. Well, let's, here's the answers. Interviewers look for everything. Anything is fair game when you're trying to decide who to hire. But if a person lacks those soft skills to make their hard skills work, why hire them? <laughs> if they can't persevere and perform well, what's the difference if they got a bachelor's degree from Harvard or anywhere else? So that's, that gives you the answer. I think 76% of the people here said, 70, said soft skills. That's right. So let's talk about mindset. How do you get to that point of achieving fit and chemistry, which have a lot to do with the soft skills? So mindset is just is a way of thinking about something. If you think you can find a job, you've got a, an optimistic mindset. If you think you can't find a job, you've got a pessimistic mindset. So your mindset becomes the foundation to getting things done. What you believe causes what you think, which causes how you feel or shapes your attitude, which inflects performance results and impressions. So your mindset creates your reality, or what you think, what, what you think is reality. Now here's a guy, William James. He's recognized as the father of modern, modern psychology, even though he died over 100 years ago. And he said the greatest discovery of his generation is that we can alter our life by altering our attitudes. We can make, by improving how we think, we can make our life as close to heaven on earth, or by not controlling how we think, we can make our life as close to hell on earth as possible. Now, here's my question. If we knew this 100 years ago, why, for goodness sakes, have we not integrated mindset training to, the, to help job seekers find jobs faster. You know, being unemployed is one of the worst jobs you can have and not want. And further, the whole idea of a job interview is to single people out and select the ones with the best mindset and performance. And most likable, according to the research you saw earlier, the people with that, that right mindset. We call them superstars, water walkers, high performers, entrepreneurial spirit and fire on the belly. And you know what? <laughs> It, interviewers spend two minutes reading your resume and then they spend an hour trying to figure out what kind of mindset you have and unfortunately job speak seekers spend a week or months developing their resume without giving any thought to their mindset and unfortunately it's because they've not had the tools to do that so the whole thing is that these impressions are not created by their resume or cover letter or other things they're created by an assessment of the person their mindset skills to persevere well. And that's what hiring managers tell us are the characteristics of right fit in chemistry. And here you see at the top, these three right here are the ones that create those advantages. So these characteristics of right fit in chem chemistry become our tra targeted training outcomes with mindset training. So let's talk about course design to achieve those training outcomes. But first let me set the stage. In 2010, the Illinois unemployment rate was about the same as it is now, 9.2%. They were barring to fund unemployment benefits, and their 
and the budget's resources were being reduced, and the future didn't look much brighter. <laughs> Pretty much the same challenges that many of you are facing right now, right this minute. And so our objective with this course was this. How do we find a way to do more with less to help the unemployed find jobs faster? And this objective is what influenced the course design. So here you see some of the criteria that we were given in designing this course. First of all, the mindset training had to be offered online. And that in order to reduce costs and increase access to over 640,000 jobless residents and more as it came along. And I'm proud to say that we met all of these criteria. And when I say everyone's a winner right here, what I'm talking about is this training benefits job seekers, but also helping professionals and employers since it improves performance and productivity. Now, this is not a poll. These are the questions on the minds of the people attending this webinar today. This is why you're here, to find answers to these questions. And I believe mindset training fulfills your criteria and will address your needs. The good news is the heavy lifting's done. The resources available now, and you can give job seekers something they'll appreciate. Now, your job seekers or graduating students, they've not had this training before. And by the end of this webinar, I think you'll agree they would be a lot better off with this resource than without it. So now, let's talk about how we structured the course, and then we'll discuss some of the contents. Now, this course is structured around what we call four tipping points. Tipping points are the little things you do that make a big difference. Then we took the th three tipping points and created three areas of focus, learning focus, to move people from unemployed to employed. And the idea for the tipping points came from job seekers themselves, our research in job centers. We asked them at the moment they got a job offer, how did you do it? What happened? And they would say, well, no, it, we didn't plan. It just sort of felt like the job found us. It just, the planets were aligned or whatever. And we probed deeper on those answers, and this is what they told us. The first tipping point was, you got to know what you desire, not what you need or want, because needing or wanting a job creates a, uh, a scarcity mindset. And so you focus on what you desire. Okay, what, what do you, are you most passionate about? And then the next tipping point was you got to believe you get it. You got to believe in full confidence. You got to feel it, see it, smell it, taste it, and use your imagination to, as if you already have it. The next tipping point was you have to manage against doubts. That is, turn off that negative self-talk that causes you to give up and uh, postpone your search or procrastinate or whatever. And the final tipping point was other people help you. That's how the job finds you. Now the the, the, we all know from research in um, um, uh, higher rates is that over 75% of placements occur due to other people helping other people. So the beauty about these tipping points is the fact that if you don't know what you desire, other people can't help you. You can't even help yourself. And if you don't believe you'll get a job, well, why would they want to believe in you? And if you have doubts, well, they're going to have doubts about you. So. These tipping points give a structure to people in building their mindset to find jobs faster, and they easily grasp it. So we use these tipping points here's, here to create modules one through three and to, to create the best mindset. And then the fourth module is the best etiquette to influence people to help you. And so these four tipping points give us those three areas of focus. What you think causes how you feel, which improves or urges what you do and urges how other people decide to help you. So we're going to talk a little bit about these areas of focus to give you an idea of what's included in the course. The course includes four learning modules, as you see here, and each module includes these resources. And it gives you an idea of how we accomplished that, a criteria of achieving multimedia and interactive. And then these, air, these boxes in green are what we refresh annually. There are supplemental slide videos in each module story videos, including uh, real job seekers. In fact, we're gonna, when we replenish annually, we're going to invite job seekers to videotape themselves and upload it to the course. We'll upload it and choosing the ones we think are great, expanding the course. Downloadable coaching exercises, customized articles that include a few learning exercises as well. In modules two and three, there are two self-hypnosis audios that help people deal with mindset challenges related to uh, the frustrations of finding a job in each, at the end of each uh, module, there's a quiz. So there's the learning module itself, and then all of these supplemental resources. Let's talk about module one, purpose. 
When looking for a job, it helps if you know what you're looking for and why. Knowing your purpose provides a sense of direction, but also it increases that self-motivation and resilience to get out of it work earlier, work longer, and also to rise above all the frustrations of looking for jobs during the slow recovery. The problem is most job seekers don't have a clear purpose except to get a job for money. They don't know what they want, but 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 not exactly what they know what they don't want rather, but but not what they do want. And so this lack of purpose is 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 a contributing factor why. People hesitate, procrastinate, they, they lack focus, they become frustrated. You see them, they quit too soon. So module one, what we're doing is giving job seekers the tool to help them drill down deeper, build their self-awareness, and discover their true purposes for wanting to work. Not just for money, but for the purpose behind the purpose of wanting money. So module one provides the motivation to rise above or self-transcend frustrations caused by looking for work in a down economy. They don't stop looking. and they don't drive up your high unemployment costs as a result. Modules two and three, we're talking in these modules about achieving that emotional stability, which I sent you the handout for. And what we're doing is borrowing from Abraham Maslow, and everybody's heard about his hierarchy of needs. Maslow says your objective here is to achieve self-actualization. The way to do that is by achieving or fulfilling these earlier needs beforehand. But what people don't realize is that before Maslow died in 71, he created another level to his pyramid called self-transcendence. And he says, this is self-actualization is still important, but you can still achieve it even if your earlier needs are not met by learning how to rise above your deficit circumstances by upregulating your thoughts and emotions. How do we do that? This is what people learn in this course. They learned that what you think causes how you feel. How you feel urges what you do. Now, going way back to William James, he says, hey, if you're feeling down during your job search, you don't have to tolerate that because feeling comes after thinking. All you need to do is to change how you think to improve how you feel. Hey, you don't have to tolerate your lack of motivation in finding a job or poor performance you, because acting comes after feeling, which comes after thinking. You can improve how you feel and the effectiveness of what you do by improving your mindset. So what this tells us is that if job seekers quit looking, procrastinate, or engage in all of these other problems here, it's because this is how they're feeling. They're trying to function on emotions that are performance inhibiting. And if this is how they're feeling, it's because this is what they're thinking. Their thoughts are out of harmony with their purposes of getting a job or whatever their purposes may be. And so what they're doing is thinking in a manner that actually opposes the fulfillment of the purposes. And so in this class, what they learn is how to improve their mindset, to improve how they feel, and therefore achieve that right fit in chemistry faster, and without all the problems caused from working with a, a poor mindset. So we teach them how to develop those performance enhancing emotions. That's one dimension of mindset. The other is that you've got to keep your thinking in sequence. Now remember that we said you think first, feel second, and then you take action. Well, whoops! Uh-oh! What are we doing with the emotions first? What are we doing with the actions first? We're out of sequence. And these here, what you see here, allowing your worst emotions to get in the way and acting without thinking, these are the seeds of all of these problems which lead to prolonged unemployment. Let me show you how that works. Now, if something happens in the job market, you just react emotionally out of fear, worry, doubt, or whatever, you begin to think, oh my gosh, you know, uh, maybe I'm looking for the wrong jobs, maybe I'm unqualified. And then when you go to take action, you, you act half-heartedly, or you fail to try, or you settle less because you put the wrong emotions in your gas tank. You allow the worst emotions to get in the way. Now, acting without thinking. How many of you ever wrote a nasty email and pushed the send button and then thought, oh, what did I do, you know, later when the dust settles? And I, I made a mistake. <laughs> Maybe I'm no good. Uh, man, I shouldn't have done that. I, I, I screwed it up. And then, then you begin feeling miserable, and as a result of filling the gas tank with the wrong emotions, you end up doing nothing or do the wrong thing. So again, these are the seeds of all of these problems that lead to prolonged unemployment. Now, the question is, What's the solution to solving these problems? How do we avoid this? Here it is. 
Now, this may sound silly, <laughs> but it's true. What psychiatrists tell us, let me explain this. Psychiatrists tell us is that drugs and alcohol are not the problems in society. They are the solutions people have found to correct for problems caused by their poor thinking skills. They self-medicate due to problems caused by that, those wrong thinking skills. Insanity is defined as the chronic and innocent misuse of thought. The operative word here is we don't know we do this stuff. We don't know because we haven't had the mindset training. And that's why we're here today. Dan, we got another poll. Yes, we do. Let's go take a look at this. What's the biggest obstacle to finding a job? And you have some answers here. Select all that you like. Dan, by the way, you're doing a good job. <laughs> Thank you. So are you. Thank you, sir. Okay, look Boy, at here. Slow recovery. People have opinions. Yeah. Look at, wow. Oh, they're going to like the results here. Oh, man. Think we should show it to them? <laughs> now, you're, the, you're the man controlling yeah, right. the timing. I know, no, we'll show it. Increased sure. competition for fewer jobs, the job seeker, okay. Let's take another five or six seconds. Get your answers in there. Okay, let's share what we got here. There you go. Evenly split on increased competition for fewer jobs and the job seeker. Very cool. Hmm. Half indicating the slow recovery. Okay, Dan, you want to close that up? Sure. And just tell me when it's uh, closed. Closed? So yep. what's the biggest obstacle? Is this closed, Dan? Uh, yeah. Okay. What is the biggest obstacle? Let's see. Let me... Um, okay, the obstacles, they're all, all of them are real. Here's what you need to know. They're all insignificant. They're real, but they're insignificant. They're insignificant until the job seeker assigns meaning to them, which in res as a result makes them significant, causing physiological strain or physiological ease, and therefore psychological strain and psychological ease. So the, answer, the real answer here is the, the job seeker is the cause of the problem. Now, how, we know, how do we know this is the case? Because from results in... Um, research and positive psychologists, we don't live in response to our circumstances, but in response to our emotions caused by how we think about our circumstances. And so what we tell job seekers in this course is that we're not trying to sell you the power of positive thinking because there's not a lot of good things to be thinking positively about. But what we are selling you, the power of learning how to think non-negatively, which is combining thoughts that are both realistic and optimistic. And in the course, they learn about middle ground reasoning skills. So what's this mean? Well, when I work as a coach with job seekers, and I ask them, why'd you stop looking? Why are you feeling so down? You know, what's the problem? And they, what they do is they say, it's a down economy. It's a high unemployment. It's fewer jobs. It's all of these things combined in one. It's miserable out there, Jeff. And I say, you know, look, here's the thing. All of these things are simply con convenient excuses. These circumstances do not have the power to cause how you feel or how you think. It's the other way around. What you think causes how you feel, which in turn urges what you do or what you don't do. So the idea of mindset training is to teach job seekers how to stop complaining about what they can control and take charge of what they can control, which is how they think to improve how they feel and perform, thereby creating the best results and also the best impressions to find jobs faster. So they learn how to do this when looking for a job, but also they take their mindset skills with them when they start a job and throughout their entire lifetime. Here's a listing of the tools inside the course that job seekers use to create and maintain their best mindset. I wish today we had time I could talk about all of them. I'm just going to talk about one, flip switching. Uh, that's my favorite. Flip switching involves Paying attention to how you feel is an indicator of what you're thinking and the need to change that thought. Now, when you flip switch, the idea in the moment you feel down or blue is to flip switch to a higher, better thought. It doesn't have to do with anything that you're dealing with at the time. If you like, 
If puppies make you happy, if birthdays party make you happy, just focus on the, the, the thought that makes you feel good at the time and hold that thought for 17 seconds and afterwards you suddenly, you suddenly feel calm. It's one of the reasons we tell, tell people to count to 10 before reacting. So regardless of the tool, and there are many in the course, the idea is to learn about them and then practice, practice, and practice. Another poll, Dan. You betcha. So what makes it possible for people to persevere and perform well during a slow recovery? What do you think? Let's launch it. Take your pick. Wow. People have opinions on this one. Hmm. We'll take another few seconds here. Numbers are still changing. Wow. Okay. Well, we've got Good. a few more that have, I know they're thinking about it. We'll take five more seconds. Okie dokie. And here's the results. There you go. What do you wow. think, Jeff? I think it's pretty good. Ability to detach from frustration, that's good. Ability to initiate action, here's the answer. Okay, Dan, you want to close the poll there? Sure. Okay, what there makes it go. possible? You know, they're all right answers. The software on this GoToWebinar only allows us to show five, and these are five resiliency strengths. They're all good. And the thing about it is, you know, these are the two that we didn't have space to put on there, insight and morality. The thing about resiliency strengths is that they occur naturally, and they make us feel good when we use them. We can use them intentionally, and we can also strengthen them. Our relationships, uh, our supporting relationships, how we use humor, how we get away from things, our hobbies, how we are able to take initiative. Insider intuition into a matter. Morality is a different one. It's kind of cool, though. It's just like going into a movie theater, and they ask you to, for $9 to pay the cost of the ticket, and, and you give them a $10 bill, and they give you back a $5 bill, and they've overpaid you $4. So you say, I'm sorry, you pay, overpaid me. Here's $4 back. And they go, thanks, man. And then you leave there. And you didn't have to give that money back, but it makes you feel good because you do it. And that's how all of these resiliency strengths work. So in the course, they learn about resiliency strengths. Now, this is the, the module four, staffing etiquette I told you about. The word classified is here is because these are things employers like myself don't tell you about. And what we talk about in staffing etiquette is what to do, how to do it, and when. Now, they don't tell you what to do. because They just give you enough to show up for the interview and what to wear and who you're going to be meeting but they don't tell you everything so that they can compare you against other interviewees, and that's what leads to interview anxiety. So we're sort of demystifying all that by teaching people the five steps of the employment process you see here. And what, we, what they learn is that at step one, you're in job seeker. To get to become a prospect, you have to be in, invited, okay? And from a prospect, you have to be invited to become an interviewee, and to be invited to become a candidate, and be invited to become employer. Now, the idea of the etiquette is if you make it up to the prospect level, they're expecting you to act like a prospect, not like an interviewee. And if you start acting like it, then they're going to think you're arrogant and they get rejected for, for overconfidence or whatever. And if you make it all the way up to the candidate stage and they're about to make you an offer, but you're still acting like a prospect, they're going to think you're window shopping and they, they reject you for that reason, that you're not interested. So what we do here with, with the staffing etiquette is for each level here, they learn the employer's three expectations at each level and the three rules of etiquette to fulfill those levels, to fulfill those expectations. And so as a result of learning what to do, how to do it, and when, it eliminates that anxiety, builds their confidence, improves performance impressions, and, and, their, and let me explain authenticity. So when, we, when people come back for interviews and I've coached them through this stuff, I say, how did it go? They say, well, great. Everything happened just like you said it would. 
and uh, we could anticipate what, the, what was going on and give them what they wanted before they asked for it. So great, did you get an offer? Yes. Did you accept? No. Why? Well, they didn't fulfill our, my expectations. They didn't demonstrate what I thought was good etiquette and I thought this was a bad, bad place for me to eventually accept the job. Wow. That's what I mean authenticity. So this tool works both ways. It helps people in preparing for the interview, but it also helps them to evaluate the opportunity. Now what we're learning about mindset training is you can't wait to see if it works. <laughs> you, 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 you have to make it work. It's like a diet. You know, it just is not going to happen unless job seekers actively get involved in this stuff. So we recommend a two-part strategy. A push strategy that you would use to excite job seekers and, and recognize their successes and a pull strategy to excite employers. The good news is mindset training, training improves work attitudes, which leads to improved performance and productivity on the job. And the feedback we're getting on this mindset training has been extremely encouraging from all types of job seekers, all types, but also from employers, helping professionals like yourselves, and also community groups who, who are getting it. They see what's going on and they say, wow, this is helping me, uh, and I'm not even looking for a job. So people are like, people are like energizer bunnies with this stuff. They enjoy the, the, the learning about themselves and, and building self-awareness. And after taking the course, and it doesn't matter if you're a, a caseworker or a job seeker, after taking the course, people can't stop talking about it. In fact, I suspect some of you in this webinar feel excited just from this little bit that you're learning today. The training re-energizes hope and enthusiasm to persevere. There's a... There's the other side of the coin. <laughs> Some people, and they, when they get started with this, they say, hey, gee, it's, it's a lot easier. You know, this, is, this mindset stuff's a lot of work. It's easier to collect unemployment. Blame the economy and postpone your search. That's true. This, is, this, is, this requires work. But the payoff is that it, it, it does all of these things to get you to the point where it improves your performance and employers say, hey, we want you. We need you. We like you. You have the right mindset. You have the right fit in chemistry. So they can, they can continue along the path they're doing and not get a job, or they can change their mindset and get a job faster. So the takeaway from this webinar is the important thing is to fill those new skill gaps. Teach people how to create the advantages. What were they? Self-motivation, optimism, and resilience by learning how to develop the, the mindset skills to persevere and perform well, the new skills gap. The other thing you need to do, proactively do more with less by using on-demand learning, 24-7 availability, to help not just the job seekers today, but through 2016, help them learn how to help themselves. Because without this training, if they just get the mechanics portion, which everybody knows already, they're only getting 50% of what they need. They need those mindset skills to create the advantages. And science science said you can't do the same thing over and over and expect the different results. You've got to accept the limits and beyond with those mechanics and go beyond them. And when I say go beyond the limits, I mean this. If, follow me on this, if employment is a top priority, and we know job seekers are hurting, and we know there's not enough jobs, can we at least give people an emotional boost with mindset training to help them persevere? Now, Take the next step. Let me help you make the mindset training a reality. It's available right now, and then here's what you do. Step one, take a closer look. Let me show you the course. I'm proud of it. Illinois is proud of it. Let people know, step two, let people know what you do, what, what you think about it, and what you would like to do with it. And step three, initiate the process to obtain a license. Tell me what I need to do to go through your process. And then step four, Customize the course and make it yours. It's yours. Now, what you get with this online course is not just the, the course itself, but you get an entire system of resources, and, and I'll make you experts in how to use them to help the youth, uh, seniors, new graduates, returning veterans, prior offenders, and who, whomever else you're dealing with. And people appreciate this resource, and they'll appreciate you for making it available. So what I want you to do is, is call me today. Let's get started. Let's begin reducing your unemployment and all the high costs that go with it. 
I want to thank you for attending this webinar. And Dan, I think we've got some, uh, we might have some questions. Oh, yeah, we've got questions. Um, so one of the questions has to do with, uh, basically, if you can share a, a success story for this program uh, with any particular state agency, how did, how did it uh, become successful? How did you measure the success? That sort of thing. Well, right now we're trying to figure out how to measure it. What we're doing right now is where we are monitoring feedback as people take the course. We're working, uh, I'm trying to work with the Southern Illinois University to find out how we can track the results on a longitudinal basis. But the problem with that is there are so many factors that, that, that so many let's see, so many factors that, that play into somebody getting a job, it's hard to distinguish whether it was this course that did it or whether it was something else. So we're working on that. We had a, we had a, a, a young woman in who, after taking the course, she'd been looking for months and was just beat down. Only one week after the course, she got an offer. Now, we don't know if it was the job or not, but what she, the, the training, but she said, it just, job, it, it just felt like I was lighter and I was more confident. Uh, confident. So the, the point is people are better off with this training than without it and we're working towards some way to measure it. Right now we don't measure the, 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 the results of training to, to, to write resumes. So I don't know, it's just something we're working on right now. And can you speak a little bit about you know, how the, the, the training was, was incorporated by, by the school? By the in other words, what it, what it looks like, who's using it, how it's being used? Well, right now, what we're doing, the, the state of Illinois, and I'm helping them do this, is we are, I'm going around the state, and I'm doing presentations to job seeker groups to promote the availability of the course and encourage people to become aware of it. There is a manager for the Illinois Department of Employment Security in downtown Chicago who's also connecting with the WIA organizations and promoting the availability of, of the course there. And there's a, you know, I know they're getting a hold of it. We've got some favorable comments, for example, up in uh, Lake County here, Kay Duane, one of the caseworkers who, who gets a lot of benefit from the training and helping job seekers use it. So it's, it's slowly getting out there, and we're, this, so we're, we're excited about it. Cool, cool. Uh, just real quickly, quick administrative question, um, how somebody really wants to get access to this slideshow. Um, it will be available via YouTube and you've got Jeff's info right, right there so if you need some other kinds of access please feel free to get in touch with him. Another question, are your videos strictly uh, featuring adults? Um, are there any teens or younger adults in them? Uh, there are some uh, young adults. Uh, there are no teenagers per se. Um, let's see, I can, there are seven story videos and they range from um, um, a returning veteran up through a senior through some younger adults. So we, we, we span the gamut, and that's a starting point. So as we get further into this in the state of Illinois, for example, we're going to be recruiting more and more job seekers of all types. And, um, and then when we work with other states, that's what we're going to be starting as well. We look at these story videos as the starting point. Now, how can we enrich the course and enlarge it as we go further? Because that's what keeps the e-learning interesting and engaging, and they keep coming back. In fact, oh, uh, wow. one of our, I think one of our attendees today, Benoit Besson, has taken the course twice. <laughs> he and he can't get enough, and he's even attending today's webinar. Wow. Let me see if I can catch up all the questions here. Um, is there a way to open up your course for interested customers to look at the materials? Yes, absolutely. That's one of the first steps. Take a look at it. Give me a call. And or send me an email, and I will arrange for you to preview the course. Like I say, we're very proud of it. In fact, several people from several states, like in Rhode Island, North Carolina, parts of California, um, and in Washington State, for example, they have been previewing the course. Okay, good, good. Another question. Um, how are job seekers, is there any kind of like a, a way that you can continue to touch Job seekers, for example, monthly newsletters and that sort of thing, is there anything that you use or offer to uh, stay in touch with uh, the people who go through the course? Well, we've got a, we just opened up a, a Facebook page and we've got over uh, uh, 3,000, 3,100 fans and so we're encouraging people to join our Facebook page and then they'll get uh, a daily update or they'll get access to a video or they get an article or so forth. 
but uh, that's about the extent of the uh, outreach at this point. And you know, it's it, we're looking for ideas, and if people, other people in other states have other ideas, we're very open to it. And we'll help you do it. Right, right. The other question has to do with if the course comes in other languages. Not yet, and we will be working on. We need a couple more states to fund. Uh, to, to generate revenue to fund that language conversion. So we are on standby and we have people available right now to convert the course to Spanish. And as we get a few states under our belt, we're also uh, hoping to work with Spain in, in helping them get this, this program launched in Spain to help the unemployment. They got a 23 percent unemployment rate there. So we're not stopping here in the United States. We're trying to get this out to other countries as well. Language is a major priority and we're, we're working on process to con quick convert the language as we go along. Cool. Okay, good. How long does the train the trainer component of this uh, take? The train the trainer takes a good four to five hours and um, in, in, a, in a classroom type setting. If you want to set up a, an online we can do that too but I go through I go through the, um, the more of what you see in this webinar in explaining the, the, the theory and the research behind it uh, going through the, the learning exercises and how to use them, how to work with the videos, and how to, how to help a job seeker get motivated to get in, involved in the course and use the materials. And it's, in, in essence, the course includes, it contains several case management tools for people who want to you know, go beyond what they're doing and improve their ability to deal with, with job seekers. So there's a lot of information. The course, by the way, I don't know if somebody's asked this, but I'll answer it. The course takes about two hours of seat time to go through all the modules. But if you take advantage of all the downloadable materials and do the exercises, it, it could take you a good four to five hours. And you can start to stop as, as often as you want. You can start up to the end. You can start at the beginning. Go back to where you left off. It's very flexible the way we've got it set up. Uh, there, there's a, an interest in marketing this. Um, do you have any thoughts? I mean, lessons learned about how you market this this, this whole course? Uh, good question. Um, I, I think you know, the, the, here in the state of Illinois, we've we've had a uh, I would describe it as a cautious launch to to get it out to people and watch how they react and so forth. And so we've been um, taking a, you know it's baby steps as we go along. But I think we're getting more and more and more and more confident. And so. Um, we put together some webinars that we're sending out there, uh, and, and these these are all the things that are included when you when you get this course. Uh, a promotional video, a high quality two minute promotional video. In fact, you can see these things online yourself and see what they look like in, through YouTube. And um, sending out um, uh, articles, and and also uh, we really haven't yet turned on the press to it, so to speak, and that'll come later. So it's just we're we're learning a lot, and I as we're learning, I'm putting together a little launch plan that other states can learn from in terms of what Illinois did and what they've learned from it. Okay, all right. Um, let's see. Our state uses a bidding process for purchases. Would you be willing to go through that process? Sure. Yeah. I mean, employment is is the country's one of the country's number one or number two priority, and. Um, and you've got processes. I'm very willing to go through whatever, whatever process that you want. That's what we did in Illinois. I had to submit a proposal, and then they had to put the proposal up for bid, and I uh, I put a bid on it. And the, you know, the thing is, I'm I'm the only creator of this course. I'm, it's the only course in the world that gets to this. And I think again, as I said earlier, my background is what enriches the content. I am a a recruiter, and um, I'm a student of the brain. So. Good, good. What's involved in customizing the course? Well, uh, I work with you. <laughs> you know, what you see, when you get a chance to look at the course, you're, you're going to have some needs in your state that Illinois didn't have. Illinois is going to have some needs that you don't have. And so we work together, go through it page by page, and we try to make it more meaningful to what you think your job seekers need. So we change the branding. We change the um, uh, some of the content. We try to get it to where you feel like this is mine. We own this. This is ours. In fact, we encourage you to take the course and put it on your servers. If you don't have your own servers, we put the course on Moodle, 
and make it available to your job seekers exclusively. So customizing it, it all depends on what you need and what you'd like to have, and if there's something that you don't like, then fine. Not every state, like I'm, I'm very proud of the state of Illinois in, in, in having the courage to say, okay, we are going to take these self-hypnosis audios and make them available to our job seekers. I'm very proud of that. I, I think it's very difficult to have a mindset course without some sort of self-hypnosis audios. Some states might say, we don't want that, and that's fine. It's your course. Okay. We've got a couple more here. I think we can fit this in, fit these in. Um, and a few I'll, more, but I know I'll we can cover at least two more. Through email if we don't mm -hmm. get to them all. I'll answer them through email if we don't get to them all. Right, exactly. So if your questions don't get answered uh, by the top of the hour here, um, certainly send them to Jeff. His contact information, of course, is there on the screen for you. Um, but um, bum bum. Well, this is kind of a follow up to the customizing uh, answer. Uh, so do you customize the course for career colleges so that we can have our own? Absolutely. In fact, we've got some people here today uh, from career colleges, and I'm very, very happy to have you involved. Um, your course will look a little different than a, a state's course because you're appealing to a different audience. And you might also want to jazz it up a bit for the youth, so to speak. And we're very flexible at doing that. And the, the idea, too, is put your branding all over it so that your students know that you're helping them find jobs faster. So, yeah, we're very anxious to help the uh, academic institutions as well. All right, let's just do one more, and then we'll have our drawing. Um, should the state purchase the license, or should workforce investment boards? It all depends. It all depends uh, on the way you want to handle it and what's most convenient to you, even if you want to do they pay some and you pay some. I mean, whatever works for you. The priority in my mind is helping reduce the high levels of unemployment. Any way we got to do that using this course, I am flexible to doing it. Whatever hoops I need to go through, I will jump through. This is my mission. Yep. This is my mission. Hmm. Okay. All righty. Well, listen. Let's have our uh, let's have our drawing right now for Ooh, the exciting. Uh, okay. Yeah. So. Uh, so we've got, I recorded these, Dan, and, um, yeah. and also uh, it tells a lot of stories about how this mindset stuff came about. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So certainly everyone will be able to access, hopefully, the YouTube when it uh, is available because you'll send the link out. And if for whatever reason you need another or want another way of looking at it or it's not working for you, again, you've got the contact info for, for Jeff here. But let's do the drawing results here. We've got people from all over the country on this one. Um, from Arizona, Christine Webb. Oh, I can hear her screaming with joy right now. It's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> um, from California, we have David Heyer. So congratulations, David. Down in Florida, we've got Johnny Johnson. I from talked to Johnny. Show, there you go. Uh, show Me State has Michelle Reeves being the winner. They're from Missouri. And finally, in North Carolina, we have Virginia Brogdon. Virginia Brogdon. So please, uh, Christine, David, Johnny, Michelle, and Virginia, give Jeff a call or drop him a note, and he will make sure that you get, uh, you get all of those CDs. It's very cool. Very cool. Well, I want to thank you, Jeff, for asking me to, to help out here today. It's been, it's been an education for me, I know. And uh, what I'd like to do is hand it off to you to wrap up. Okay. Thanks, Dan, and thank you very much for all your help moderating this stuff. Uh, I just want to remind the folks that you're going to get an email reminder uh, to complete the survey. We'd really appreciate your feedback if you could send that back to me. Uh, the good news is no more reminders. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and thank you so much for your interest in wanting to help the unemployed. I hope you see that in hearing me, I'm extremely passionate about this topic. It's dominated my entire life, and I want to help you. Thank you so much for watching, and we're going to shut it off now. Thank you very much. Give me a call.